I want to encourage you this morning to think about your journey of faith. And when you think about all these promises that have been fulfilled, you need to understand that God is not through with us yet, that the New Testament hasn't ended as far as what Christ is going to continue to do in your life. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you need to know that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is still real in your life today. And He still wants to work and to challenge and equip and strengthen and help you in your daily journey. Now the Sunday Sermon with Lee Farmer, pastor of Cone Baptist Church, Heathsville, Virginia. All right, open your Bibles, please, to Acts chapter 2. One of the things that you'll discover as you go through your Christian journey of moments of highs and lows and difficulties and challenges is that when you depend heavily on your faith, what you find out is God is always there providing just what is needed at that time. Now, many of you in this room have shared with me your testimonies, and there have been times in your life when you've just felt up against the wall and and the burdens of the world were just on top of you, and you wondered how you were going to overcome it. And then when you look back years later, you can see the handprint of God on that situation. Some of you have shared your testimonies with me where you have realized that, that it was in those moments when you weren't sure how much more you could take or how much more you could do, you now realize that God was there all the time providing what was needed. Now, He may not have delivered you out of it instantly. It may have been a slow, gradual process, one step, one day at a time. But the more we lean on Him, the more He gives us the strength to face the situations that are before us. Throughout the three years of Jesus' public ministry, one of the things that you see in His life is that He was always trying to meet the need. And many times He would meet the physical need even before He would address the spiritual need. He would you know, make sure that food was provided for those who were hungry or illness was taken care of for those who had a medical issue. And then he would deal with issues of faith. And so many times people would come to Christ oftentimes in desperation. When you think about the woman who came and all she wanted was just the hem of a garment. When you think about all the different people that came to Jesus, the woman at the well who just wanted to have a conversation with him. And in each time they came to him not knowing what he had to offer. But in every single situation, he provided just what was needed. In that moment when those men came and brought their friend and they knocked a hole in the roof and they lowered their friend down through that hole so that he could be in the presence of Jesus to find healing, not only were the man who was on the, the bed healed, but those people who did that were blessed in their faith. You see, He blesses us each and every day. He challenges us each and every day. In those last few moments of Jesus' life, in those last few weeks leading up to the day of, of His crucifixion, He explained to the disciples that He was going to have to do something that was pretty intense. He was going to have to go, and, and they were kind of scratching their heads wondering what He meant by that. And He explained to them that He would have to go, but on the third day He would be raised again. He made a reference to the temple. He said they'll tear down the temple, but on the third day, that temple will be rebuilt. He talked about going to be with his father. And he explained to them that in the moment that he would be gone, in the absence of his physical presence on earth, he would not leave those believers abandoned. That he would provide for them just what they needed in that moment. And we know Last Sunday, we were celebrating the accomplishments of our young people through the Graduate Recognition and Scholarship Sunday, and it was an exciting day. But it was the day of Pentecost. It was that moment when the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit came rushing down to the earth. Scripture says, like a mighty rushing wind. And Scripture now says, when you read through the New Testament, that when you become a believer in Jesus Christ, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit now dwells within you. Now, the difference there is in the Old Testament, it dwelt among. But for those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, we now know that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit dwells within us. You become the dwelling place of the power of God, the temple of God, through your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Open your Bibles with me, your apps, if you have them open, please, to chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. And let's talk about that awesome moment when God provided through the power of the Spirit what was needed for us even today as we sit here in this place in 2022. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly like a sound of a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. And now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one of them heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all of these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? So in that moment when they're all gathered together, all of a sudden the power of God comes upon them and immediately they begin to speak in different languages. And Scripture is very clear here. There were languages that they'd never studied. Now think about that a minute. How many of us suffered through a language in school, high school or college or whatever? Most of us had to sit through something, didn't we? Some of you sit back there. Those, you know, Latin students, you you kind of know who they are, right? They kind of got the noses up in the air because they survived Latin. Some of us survived Spanish, barely, but we survived Spanish. The hardest thing I ever had to take was Greek and Hebrew, and that was just about rock my world. That was difficult for me. But you probably remember all the effort that you had to put in to study it. And then I asked the question, how much can you still speak today? How much of it can you still use today? So you think about all those years and all those hours of studying a language and learning a language and how much work and effort it took for you. Man, these people had a shortcut. All of a sudden, with a blink of an eye, they're hearing the gospel message presented to them in their native languages by people who never studied the native languages. Now think about that a minute. That was the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit coming down upon these people. And all of a sudden, they're hearing this great good news message of God spoken in a language that they can truly understand. It reminds me of the printing press. And most of you know the history of the Gutenberg printing press. You know, scriptures were very special, and they were only be found like in the Holy of Holies or the most special places in churches until the printing press. Then all of a sudden, scripture is printed and is mass distributed around the world so that all people have access to scripture. What a moment that was to change that we all now have equal access to the Word of God. In this moment, as verse verse 9 and 10 say, Uh, People from the Corinthians, the Medes, the Elamites, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, uh, each, all these places, it lists in these places, they're now hearing the great good news through the power of the Holy Spirit in languages that people had never spoken before. But all of a sudden now they're beginning to speak it. Jews and converts to Judaism, verse 11 says, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Now, I'm sure there were some people saying, these people are drunk. We've seen them accuse the people of Scripture of that before, haven't we? These people have lost their minds. But it was the power of God changing lives even in that moment. Verse 12 says, they were amazed and perplexed. I can only imagine. They asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they'd had too much wine. Here we go. And Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem... Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is taken from Joel chapter 2, beginning in verse 28 through 32. And here's a quote. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will see dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fires and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming and the great and glorious day of our Lord. And then verse 21 is so special. And anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Paul also quotes that in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, folks, this was absolutely the most miraculous thing you could imagine taking place here. With all of a sudden, these people are seeing things and hearing things that they could never even have imagined. But hundreds and hundreds of years prior to this, the prophet Joel said it was going to happen. 
when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon the people, things will be different. They'll hear things and see things. They'll understand the more and more the power of God. And that's exactly what takes place here in Scripture. But Peter had to stand up and declare before them, don't think they're crazy. Understand that this, once again, just like all the other things that have happened in the, in the New Testament, is just a fulfillment of God's Word. Prophecy coming true. The fulfillment of all those things that the, that the New Testament prophets, the apostles, and Jesus Himself said would come true. All those things falling into place one time after another. And especially understand this, that it was the fulfillment of the promise of Jesus Christ who said, I will send you a helper. A helper. A comforter. Someone to strengthen you and give you strength and power in those moments. Someone, a power and a presence that you can claim, that you can rely on in those difficult times. And that's exactly what you see unfold here as the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit comes upon them. So what does this look like today in our life? Scripture says when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit dwells within you. You become that dwelling place for the power of God. And the struggle that goes with us is is how do we learn to let the Holy Spirit lead? Because it's so easy for us to take control. It's so easy for us to do things the way we want to do things. It's harder for us to learn to submit to the power of God in our everyday lives. What I want to challenge you to think about this morning is in your own personal journey, as you think about the fact that you are that dwelling place of the power of the Holy Spirit, is He actually leading your life each day? Are you allowing the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to give you direction, to point you, to clear your path, to give you the strength that you need to follow? in that path. What we see here is that fulfillment of that helper coming. And today, you and I get to be the beneficiaries of that because through our faith and trust, we get to find the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our own personal journey. And as each one of you, over the times that you've shared your testimony with me, you've talked about how the power and the presence of the Lord was with you in those moments when you needed Him the most. And you know it wasn't the physical presence of Jesus. It was His power the Holy Spirit. Stop for just a moment, believer, and ask yourself, have there been the moments in your life when you can look back and recognize that the power and the presence of God was so real in your life? Those are those mileposts that we look at. Those are those things that they're evidence of the power of God working in your life and in mine. The more I have discovered in my spiritual journey, the more I have learned I have to lean on the Holy Spirit more and more and more every single day. You know, when we're young, we think we can do it all, right? In a Bible study this morning, she said something about don't do crazy things, don't be crazy. But when we're young, we don't think about it. We just often do because we think we're invincible. And as we get older, we realize that's not the case. We don't heal as fast as we used to, do we? Took a little spill the other day, and I thought, oh, I'm fine. I got up real quick. <laughs> Couldn't move the next day, but that day I was fine because people were watching. We don't bounce back like we used to, do we? But the power and the presence of God is real in our life, and He gives us what we need to push forward and to continue on. I want to encourage you this morning to think about your journey of faith. And when you think about all these promises that have been fulfilled, You need to understand that God is not through with us yet. That the New Testament hasn't ended as far as what Christ is going to continue to do in your life. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you need to know that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is still real in your life today. And He still wants to work and to challenge and equip and strengthen and help you in your daily journey. But have you received Him? Have you put your faith and your trust in Him? Some of the most miraculous testimonies I've heard from people over the years, and I include my mother in this, because as she was dying from cancer, we had been fighting a battle for a little over three years. She was diagnosed with cancer at 49 years of age, and she fought that battle for three long years. But I will never forget when I was going back and forth between Tennessee and here every other weekend, she said to me, I am so ready to go. 
Now, that was not what I was praying for. I'm going to be honest with you. But in that moment when she said to me, I'm so ready to go, he's with me. Man, my, my whole perception of what was going on changed in a moment. Because it was in that moment that she was longing to be in the presence of her Lord. And how in the world could I wish anything else but that for her? Some of you have similar testimonies. You know people that you've talked to who even in the midst of the darkest times in their life, they've recognized the power and presence of God working and challenging her. And I'm so thankful today that you and I have the Holy Spirit in our life every day, that we can lean on the presence of the Holy Spirit. It does not mean that our lives are going to be perfect. I get upset sometimes when I watch these people on TV. I won't mention their names. Talk to me later. Who talk about, if you have faith, everything will be perfect. If you give money, everything will be perfect. They've not read their Bibles, have they? Because as I pick up my Scripture, especially when I think about the Apostles, they had issues. The Apostle Paul had something going on in his life. He referred to it as a thorn in his side. And do you know that he prayed and he prayed and he prayed that God would remove it? And guess what? He didn't. But he gave him the strength to deal with it every day. He gave him the strength to push forward and push through. What about us today? Where are we in our journey of faith? Where are we in terms of our learning to lean on the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit came in like a mighty rushing wind. Sound familiar? But it came in for our benefit today. That through our faith and our trust, you and I get to experience that power and that presence in our life. I need Him. Do you? Do you need Him in your life today? Can you claim Him in your life and lean on the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your daily journeys? Would you bow your heads for just a moment, please? The Lord has provided for us illustrations today of mighty rushing wind, has He not? But can you imagine for just a moment what it must have been like when they were all gathered there in that place, people from different countries, communities, nationalities, races, and all of a sudden, the good news is being heard and changing lives. All of a sudden, the power of God is at work changing lives. My prayer for all of us today is that we have had the opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And in that relationship, we've been able to claim the power that He gives us to get through this life. But there may be somebody here today who doesn't know Christ. Oh, they've heard His name. They've heard people talk about Him, preach about Him, teach about Him. But maybe never opened their heart personally to Him and accepted Him as Lord and Savior. To understand that sin separates us from God, but in Jesus, in our relationship with Jesus, that sin can be forgiven, that bridge can be built for us to be in His presence for all of eternity. To know that in our daily walk with Christ through the Holy Spirit, He gives us strength. One step at a time, one day at a time. That's power, folks. Given to us as a promise from Jesus Himself. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey today, my prayer is that you know Him. But if not, I pray that God will begin to soften the door of your heart. You'll be able to open up your heart and to receive Him. To have that personal daily relationship with Him. To encourage and strengthen and help you in this life. To guarantee you the assurance of forgiveness of sin. 
to guarantee you an eternal home. Do you know Him today? Can you claim the power of the Holy Spirit in your life today? After the service, I'll stay up here for a few moments. Come talk to me. Come pray. Let's celebrate if God's doing something in your life today. Let's celebrate if He's encouraging and challenging you today. Oh Lord, we thank You for the blessings that You've given us here in this moment. We ask now that as we come to this time of invitation, a time of reflection, a time of calling and acceptance, Lord, that You just move in us in a mighty way. We give You praise. We thank You, God, for allowing us this moment to come to worship. We thank You for the word of encouragement, the assurance of a promise fulfilled that we today, because of what happened there on that day of Pentecost, can claim the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives each and every day. Thank you for that assurance, Lord. Lead us now in our time of invitation, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You've just heard the Sunday Sermon with Lee Farmer, pastor of Cone Baptist Church, Heathsville, Virginia, online at conebaptist.com. That's C-O-A-N-Baptist.com.